Well, happy Father's Day to everyone. I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad you've chosen to spend this brief time tonight. Uh, if you were in the worship service at Calvary Baptist Church Harlingen this morning, I urge you to go back, reflect upon the message. And if you have family discussion, however you use uh, these brief videos, I would hope that it would be of value to you. If I can ever help, there are questions you have for me, uh, please contact me. If you were in the worship services, uh, you have a phone number for contact information. Otherwise, please contact the office at um, Calvary Baptist Church Harlingen uh, during office hours Monday uh, through Thursday. And so I'll be happy to get back with you or text me. You're always welcome to do that. Ask a question on Facebook or whatever. I hope that you have had a wonderful Father's Day. I'm well aware that for many of us, we have good memories as well as bad memories, and some of our memories uh, were absolutely excellent. Even though uh, people who are very knowledgeable in how we learn, how the human body functions, and things of that nature, and they've helped us, and most of us didn't have that when we were raising our children. So. We have access today, and hopefully, as in Scripture, in Psalm 78, they were to raise generation after generation after generation of godly children, and we hope to do that. But uh, we all carry stuff from our past. We all carry stuff even in our present, and sometimes that gets in the way of our reconciliation and gets in the way of our actually functioning as a family should. So, I'm not here to be a therapist. I am not that. I am not here to be uh, some kind of psychological counselor, but to give you instruction and wisdom from the Word of God, and yet to use true science and true things that we know that uh, godly men and others have discovered about us. One of the things is uh, has been discovered is what's called the four S's of attachment, and attachment is how a child comes to uh, through their nurturing years in their early years they they attach themselves to significant others and so uh, we've discovered that every human being on the planet needs four things i want to reemphasize those from the message in case you forgot number one we all need to be seen we we need to know that we're acknowledged uh have you ever walked in a room and nobody ever spoke to you oh my goodness imagine being in a family like that where you're at the table and you're in the room, and sometimes that has to do with birth order, various other things, but you just don't feel like that they know you're there. And we have that need uh, to be to know and to be known, is what some have called it, but to be acknowledged, to be seen. We have the need uh, to be secure. And uh, one of the things I learned when I was uh, in law enforcement, and especially with single moms, uh, dads were absent. Dads had abandoned the family, and if they were ever present in the first place. So uh, those children and those moms had horrible lives, and uh, they, they needed security. And every child needs to know when they lay down at night, they're in a safe place. They need to know that coming around mom and dad is a safe place. Not just safe from physical danger, but safe from emotional harm, safe from arguments and battles but a place where they're loved, where they can love and be loved. Uh, that's the that's, uh, safety. So we've got to be seen, to be secure, to be uh, soothed, to be soothed. Um, we need to be comforted from time to time. A lot of things happen in our growing up years. A lot of things happen in our adult years that are beyond explanation, and uh, sometimes things hurt deep. And they hurt in ways. One of the, what would hurt me may not hurt you. You may be able to stuff it off. But because of what baggage each one of us, and we all do, there's no exception to this. We all do carry baggage out of our past. That's not to blame, but that's just simply to recognize the reality of life in a fallen world. And, and so uh, we need to be soothed. We need comfort. And we also need um, significance, a sense of significance. God created each of us with purpose in mind. There are no accidental births. Uh, I, it doesn't matter how that child was conceived, whether it was a loving relationship, regardless of what it was, 
that child's birth is not insignificant. And so each of you that are listening to me right now, I want you to know in God's eyes, you are very significant. You are created in his image. And so from that, let us move back and reflect on the text. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. This was a church, and he said, I'm writing to you like a father. And of course, God is our perfect father. None of us earthly fathers get to be perfect. I, I wish it were different. I wish it were different for my own sake. I wish it were different for our children and for everybody we touch. But we're not. We're absolutely not. We're flawed human beings. And it is only through the blood of Jesus Christ shed at the cross that we can enter a loving, forgiving relationship with him and know that our sins are forgiven and heaven is our home. But while we live here, he places within us the power of the Holy Spirit and he draws us to himself. Now, out of that, uh, God is our perfect heavenly father. So what should we do? Paul wrote to the Thessalonians and he gave them three things. He, he told them to encourage one another comfort one another, and to urge one another to follow through with purpose in life. And so I'm going to ask you to do something. As you consider the possibility of uh, sitting down tonight, talking with your family, I would like for you to reflect upon your past. Reflect upon your father. You say, oh my goodness, my dad, I don't even know who he was. Well, if you don't reflect upon God as your father and understand and know that in the Bible, the Word of God, we have a perfect treasure of God's truth leading us to redemption, leading us to understand the love of God demonstrated in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we can trust Him and know Him. And if you don't, just simply say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please come into my life. Forgive my sins. Help me to live for you. And I promise you, my friend, He'll do that. He'll do it right now. In just it, mm, that quick, if you're sincere in your heart and your motives and you respond to him, he will hear you. He will come into your life. And that helps us then to, to move to the point to where relying upon the strength that only Jesus gives. We can look at our earthly fathers. Now, for most of you, for many of you, you had loving, wonderful earthly fathers, even though we've all failed. Many of us did the very best we knew how, and our children don't hold that against us, whatever our failures were. They understand, they love, and yet they're trying to do better for their children than we did by them, and that's a good thing. I, I like that in my children. I, I thank God that they're trying to do better than their dad did, and, and that doesn't mean that they're critical and negative toward me or doesn't love me. It simply means that each generation progresses. And that's how God intended it. And so uh, when you're raising godly seed, I want you to think back this special Father's Day to your own earthly father. Try to find something in your mind and in your heart that is good, that you remember. For many of you, that will be many, many, many wonderful, precious memories. For some of you, it will be more difficult. But dwell on that thing. That good thing. You know, Paul taught us in Philippians, and it's in the fourth chapter, and he said if there's anything that's noble, anything that is pure, anything, and he went on with all of those superlatives, he said, think on these things. We usually react what we think in our mind. And so if we're thinking good thoughts, if we're thinking holy thoughts and positive thoughts, even though we may have to correct some things in our family life, yet we will do it in grace, in love, in sweetness, and it will be received by others. So as you think of your own background, think of those good things that happen. Dwell on those and allow the Lord to heal your heart. Allow the Lord to use you in the life of your family. And wherever you are in the past, forget that. Just, just sort of draw a line. Right now, draw a line in your life timeline and remember, whatever is past is past. I'm pressing forward through Jesus Christ, and he will deliver you. He will free you. It may be a long process, and it may be a lot of hard work. He delivers us through. 
more than he delivers us from. So trust him, love him, and thank God for your earthly parents. Because at least, no matter what earthly parents did, at least they're the reason we're here. They gave us life. And so Jesus gives us life eternal and life abundant. I hope you'll reach out and trust him for that. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week.